Irving Game of the Week is brought to you in part by Gerald Stavely Dry Cleaning. From Irving School Stadium, it's the Irving Community Television Network Game of the Week. Tonight, District 9 6A frontrunner Jesuit against the Irving Tigers in their 2015 homecoming. Hi again, everyone. I'm Rob Wilman. John Nelson will join me in the broadcast booth in just a moment. Well, unlike their counterparts from the city of Irving, the Tigers, they didn't have a game at home against Sunset or R.L. Turner for homecoming. What's the best they could do? Unfortunately, Jesuit, fresh off their big win against Skyline, breaking that team's 49 straight district wins in the winning streak in this district. So it's going to be a tough order indeed. And this is the guy you've got to stop. He's the quarterback. He's got all the tools. Number 17, Jacob Polish. His 18-yard run with under two minutes to go sealed the deal with a 24-21 Ranger win. And Polish can beat you with his arm just as well. And he had big shoes to fill, too, coming into this season with Bo Schneider leaving for Central Florida. But he's gotten the job done at quarterback. The head coach is Brandon Hickman in his fifth year at Jesuit. His teams have always made the playoffs. And with that win over Skyline, he hopes his kids can go farther with a better seed in postseason. He's quick to point out that he doesn't have a lot of superstars on this team, but he loves the cohesiveness of his players. He says his three keys to victory tonight begins with just making sure his defense can tackle. He said they wouldn't have beaten Skyline if they didn't. Also, he says, keep the turnovers down. Now, I know, yeah, most coaches say that all the time, but Hickman says the Rangers' only loss came when they turned it over four times in one game. They don't want that to happen again. And then finally, he says, just keep on clicking. You know, I talked to three different coaches about the Irving High School program, and to a man, they said that these guys are headed in the right direction. Now, that's a tough sell to Alan Torrey and his coaching staff and the players because they've lost every game they've played so far this year. Now, Coach Torrey, he is in his fourth year at Irving High School. He's never been able to beat the Rangers, and Jesuit has never lost at ISS. So Delatore and his coaching staff have their work cut out for them. They showed some signs of life offensively towards the end of last week's game against Mack. Maybe they can continue that momentum tonight. Now on the defensive side, linebacker Noah Salinas leads the charge. He's been on 96 tackles this year, 16 of those solo. He's also one of the hardest hitting players on the defensive side. They will need his tenacity tonight. The other senior linebacker leading the charge defensively is Markel Cooks. He's second on the team in tackles, has 18 solo, and he leads the Tiger D in tackles for a loss with six. Jesua head coach Brandon Hickman says Irving's defensive line is strong and could give the smaller guards some trouble along the way. So there you have it. One team is riding a winning streak that uh, includes a big-time upset, while another is hoping they can provide an upset on their own. It's the Irving Tigers and the Jesuit Rangers coming up next on the ICTN Game of the Week. And welcome back to Irving School Stadium. John Nelson with Rob Willeman. Week six, we've reached the halfway point of the 2015 season. As you see, the Jesuit Rangers averaging 38 points a game. And here come the Irving Tigers, still looking for that elusive first win of the 2015 season. Jesuit averaging 38 points a game, giving up 21. And coming off that uh, outstanding win last week over Skyline 24-21, that snap, Skyline's 49-game district winning streak. A team that was down 14-6 at the half. And you see the Tigers on homecoming nights. Rob, it's the Purdue Boilermakers and the Green Bay Packers of the 1930s. The uniform schemes <laughs> tonight. And Rob Willman just about set for tonight's play-by-play. -play, Irving and Jesuit. All right, John, thank you very much. Yeah, that is Jesuit right there you're looking at. And 
Yeah, they do have numbers. They're outlined barely. Lamper, one of the two deep backs. Also, it appears uh, Bender just to his left, about ready to tee things off back there as well. Number 39, Rosenbleeth, a sophomore wide receiver to the near side. Lamper on the far side. About set to tee this off. There's a strong wind to blow in left to right, so the wind will be to the backs of the Irving Tigers. This one should go deep into the end zone, and it does. So the Rangers established in 1942 with an enrollment of just over 1,100. Coming off by far their biggest win in the program. A lot of folks said uh, that Skyline is their new rivals, and it was pretty funny because Coach Hickman was telling me, you got to win, you got to beat somebody to be a rival. That's the first time we ever beat them. <laughs> but this was a good year to do that. They, uh, Skyline, I think the Raiders not quite as strong as in years past. But we do have a strong quarterback out there, number 17, Jacob Polish, the junior. Plays on the baseball team. He's a pitcher. Didn't even get to have the spring game for these Rangers because of baseball. And they start things off with Holtz coming to the near side and a really nice tackle on the near sideline by number 13, Kevin Kirkland. Came up quick and sealed off that edge as the uh, Rangers come in averaging a hundred and pretty balanced team, 179 yards of rushing and 160 through the air and a big stop for the Tigers on first and 10. Yes, Coach Hickman said he thought Polish has done a good job coming in as just a junior and not having a spring game and trying to fill the shoes of Schneider, who's left and playing collegiate ball. Second down, Polish will take it on his own, and he's wrapped up by number 56 making the play, Rene Zamora, the defensive end, offensively. The starters, Mr. Nelson. All right, offensive line not huge, but they're a pretty active. Fearing, Allen, McLeod, Metz, and Patterson from tackle to tackle. Palish, the running backs and receivers. Palish comes in with a completion rate of right at 60%, 626 yards and eight touchdowns. Third down and about five. They fake the pass, go right across the middle and knocked away at the last minute, intended for Connor Lamper, the senior. One of the favorite targets of Polish. That'll set up fourth down and five, and I would assume that the Rangers will have to punt. Last week on IC team, linebacker and defensive end Brandon Hearn took a really hard hit. He has uh, a sore neck, will not play tonight, probably miss the rest of the year. Reneza Moore I saw with a lot of snaps that last time out, and apparently, Polish is going to be doing the punting tonight. A little change up. Again, he's punting against the wind. The object is to stay away from it. Probably ill-advised pickup by the Irving Tigers, but they'll have it on their own 35-yard line with their first offensive possession of the ball game. And here's the offense for the Irving Tigers tonight. From tackle to tackle, Demas, Rojo, Ross, Mendez, and Mario Diaz. Your quarterback is D.J. Stevenson, the sophomore. Young, Miles, are setbacks. Briggs, Johnson, and Howard, the receivers. Well, without Kyandis Hall back there, you lose a lot of production. You're going to see Raquan Young and also big number 35, James Miles. James picked up some big yards and a touchdown towards the end of that MacArthur game last week. I'm really ready to watch this guy run if he can, but first of all, Stevenson will keep it. Got a penalty flag, and that's one of the many things that Coach De La Torre said he would love to clean up are those mistakes when you're a team that's trying to find a foothold and trying to find itself and pick up wins. You cannot make costly turnovers or mistakes. Like a penalty there, and there's a holding. And You know, John, first downs are few and far between for this young Tiger team, and when you find yourself first down and 20 instead of first down and 10. Holding. Number 44 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, previous spot, still first down. Referee Nat Maxson tonight. Nick Howard, the tight end, called for the hold, number 44. And that'll march him 10 back. Uh, you're right, Rob. I mean, you've worked all week. It's first and 10. You'd like to get off to a clean start. And uh, you're penalized all the way back to the 25. So now you're in a hole to begin. Stevenson, straight drop back, plenty of time. Tries to hit Howard, and it... Goes out of his hands onto the ground. 
incomplete. And we know the second down. Stevenson had plenty of time. Those are the type of plays that that really they need to run, those that happen quickly. Yeah, not a bad pass. I mean, right in his grasp, right at the 35-yard line, and uh, probably should have been hauled in. That'll stop the clock at just under 11 minutes, just getting underway here in the first quarter. No score. Win to the back of Stevenson. Another drop back. A little happy feet still moving around, being flushed out of the pocket. And he's run to the ground by big number 98, it looks like, Metz. There's two Metz brothers. This is Jack, the junior, and his older brother plays on the offensive line. Hey, you got to make a decision. I mean, you held it too long, and if all those fields just dump it away, granted it's beyond the line of scrimmage and was not able to get anything going there. So the Tigers go backwards a little bit. Loss of 13. Third down and 33. Ball at about the 12, their own 12-yard line as you take a look at Mets there. We haven't seen Young in the backfield. It's been Miles for the most part. And we got another penalty flag. May have been some motion a little early. Before the play, delay a game. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. They get the playoff. That'll move them back five more yards. And now they're inside their own 10-yard line. Play clock was down to three. And with a five-yard march off, you're now at the eight-yard line. You have the wind at your back. That's a good thing, but the bad thing is third and a mile. Stevenson about 40% from the passing. They go up to Miles. Miles has got some room. Cuts across the 20. Gives the punter some breathing room. Number 35, James Miles on the Coach Della Torre is really excited about his young running back, James Miles, and what he's going to be able to do when he gets older. You know, this program, although struggling in the last few years, they've turned out some really great running backs in their day and have really been able to ride the coattails of those running backs into postseason. And if Della Torre can keep the group together, get some bigger linemen up there as well, look out for Miles. This guy has the potential to really rack up some numbers as he matures. All right, fourth down. And the lefty with the kick again with the wind to his back. And going back to pick it up is Garcia. Garcia sandwiched right about his own 40-yard line. And that's where the Rangers will set up shot for their second offensive possession in the first quarter. Jesuit last year finished eight and four, five and two in the district, beat Richardson Pierce in round one, lost to Rockwall in round two. But uh, Rob Brandon Hickman has really done a nice job in his fifth year. Took a team to the regional semis a couple of years ago. They finished nine and four. You know, every every uh, year that he's coached this team, they've made postseason. And they've always gone in as a number two, a number three, never a number one. And now with Skyline in their hip pocket, they're hoping that'll help with the seeding process and they can go a little bit further because of that. All right, Holtz right up the middle off the right side. He gets about five yards. Set up a very good manageable second down and five for the Rangers. And the defense tonight for the Irving Tigers trying to hold this rushing attack at bay. Robinson, Solis, Reynolds, and Tinglin. The middle, Salinas Cooks and Jordan Tinglin. And the secondary, Alan Pruitt, Sanders, and Kirkland. Holtz, the team's leading rusher with over 380 yards and a couple of touchdowns this year. Adam Holtz, number 24. Yep, he's about their only running back, really, because they like to run the spread. There's a penalty flag called, and Polish gets the first down with a pickup of nine. If they didn't call the play, then more than likely it's an offsides against Irving if it was unless it was an illegal formation against Jesuit. Flag dropped on the far side. Offsides defense, number 34. And indeed, an offsides against the Irving Tigers was used. And Jesuit picking up their first first down of the ball game. Polish announced Monday his intention to commit to Stanford. Of course, that's non-binding until February of next year, but Number 17, the south ball, just as a junior, already making a, a verbal commitment. A pitcher on the baseball team, a really good pitcher. And Peyton Long, their linebacker, has committed to the Naval Academy. Post, post, post. One of 27 seniors on this team. 
First and 10. We've only seen one attempted pass, and here's another run to the right side. I believe it caught him, caught him napping a little bit as uh, Lawborough, Max Lawborough, the senior. One of those little wheel routes, and they come from the slot, go against the grain, and Max picks up a first down. 16 yards and first down number two. Max coming in with 123 yards as a rusher. They don't go to him very often. Also, Coach Hickman was telling me, even though we run the spread, we do a no huddle, we take our time. We, we don't really hurry up. He said, every now and then we'll push it, but most of the time we're pretty slow and deliberate about it. Holtz left side, jumps over a couple of tacklers, and Holtz picks up more yardage before he's dropped by Cruz. Also Kirkland, the DB. When we see Peyton air it out, Rob, you gotta keep in mind, this is a team, 13 different receivers have caught balls. So anybody that wears a number one to 88 is eligible. <laughs> 13 different wideouts. Second down at about five. And Polish going to the right, drug down by number nine, Markel Cooks. Another tackle by the linebacker, but not until the Rangers pick up another first down on this drive that started back at their own 40-yard line as we wind the clock and look at it again, John. Markel second on the team in tackles with 74 and just a straight pull down on the sleeve. Grabbed him by the jersey. That was a thing of beauty watching Polish get that game-winning touchdown against Skyline last week from 18 out. It, the, the seas just opened in the middle, and he put it in another gear that the coach said he really hadn't seen a lot of this year. And another handoff off to the wide side, number 13, Lawborough again. Second time they've run that slot around, and we do have a penalty flag at the 14. Yeah, it kind of got clogged up around the 15-yard line. That's where the... The referee dropped the flag. It's on Jesuit, will be their third. The Holding number 23 on the offense. That's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. And it is a 10 yard march off. Kind of a reach around, maybe got just enough of it to warrant the flag. Yeah, talking to some of the Jesuit uh, personnel before the game, that contest with Skyline, they could have easily been down 21 nothing but rallied, trailing 14-6 to come back and win it. So it's first down, they say 16, marking it from the point of the foul. And let's see if maybe Polish tries to go to the air this time, hit some of his wide receivers, his big ones like Lamper. Little down and out, caught and complete, knocked out of bounds. Picked up there by number seven, and it is Lamper, his favorite receiver, the senior, has a lot of height. Really a tall, easy target, John. Yeah, he's a good target in the open field. Also, right on the edge, and takes two of them to wrap him up. Connor with five touchdown catches this year. Jesuit with a pretty impressive uh, web page that they keep up with all their stats, and then they give us a 39-page <laughs> handout before the ball game. Nothing going there on the inside, and tackle made by Austin Sanders. We call his name out a lot. He's also helped by Kevin Kirkland, the sophomore DB coming up to make the stop. Yeah, Sanders just planted the running back, just picked him up and planted him hard on the turf. That's the thing about Irving, John. We've seen him. They, you know, for two out of three plays, they're really strong and tough, and then, you know, a third down will come up or they'll give out one big play and they find themselves, you know, in a hole. So it's third down. Red zone offense, very proficient. We've got another penalty flag or a timeout called timeout called by Irving. You know, part of the stats they gave us, they gave us red zone stats and opponents red zone and third down and fourth down conversions. It's like a, I've seen colleges that are, are not quite as, uh, as good and in-depth as the Jesuit coaching staff and, and actually a sports information director. But uh, they've been in the red zone so far this year, over 25 times, and they've scored uh, practically every time but twice. I like the numbers. That's a pretty good percentage. Oh, it's huge. They failed to score against Sunset once. 
in the first half, and then they've they've been able to score one field goal out of the group. But it's just incredible what uh, what these guys have been able to do offensively. When they get in the red zone, most of the time they'll score a touchdown. One time they had to kick a field goal. They will be against the win a little bit here with 5:03 to go in the first quarter. All right, we're going to do it again. Polish fakes, a little down and out. No one is there, and boy, Irving gets a break that time as Holtz had come out of the backfield. Check that, that's number 23, John Wunderlich. Folks, we're having a hard time looking at the numbers. You can see it on your screen at home. The arms are the best for us, but uh, that is Wunderlich, and man, he had touchdown written all yeah, over that, John. He did, he stumbled before he made the catch. Got kind of caught up. Unable to ride himself. A little off balance on fourth and short now. All right. They've only messed up on fourth down conversions once all year. Polish, the lefty, trying to get the first. It's hit from behind, and it's going to be close. He might have it on that last little effort. Needed to get to the eight on a fourth and six. It is a first down. It'll be... First down, number three. He has it loaded up, pulls it back, and trying to get to the eight-yard line, and, yeah, he's got it. So they have only missed on a fourth down conversion once this year. They've been averaging about two tries per ball game. So it's first and goal, two men in the backfield. Handoff right side, and nice tackle around the ankles. Coming up to make the play that time was number 41 or 43, Reynolds. And that'll keep them out of the end zone. It'll be about a second down and four. You know, the Rangers had 33 Letterman returning, eight of them on the defensive side. But uh, this running play as they try to string it out, and number 40, Johnny on the spot, Cabello. Got him low, the sophomore. That was Lothborough, another sophomore that De La Torre has to be playing. Holtz, left side, that's the strong side of the line, and he's in for the touchdown. Burrows into the center of the line and a four-yard run, and Adam Holtz has collected his third rushing touchdown of the year and closing in now on an even 400 yards. Well, credit the Tigers for making them really work hard for this second drive. They go to that wide split. I don't think I've seen them anybody split that wide. I saw MacArthur. They, you know, we see them do it every week, but man, they really hugged that far sideline on the try for the extra point. Got two seconds, they're going to get it off. Have to take a timeout. Play clock down to two seconds. And Jesuit uh, having to burn a timeout here. Wingerski is their kicker. And it really wasn't his call on it. They were waiting to get a call from the sideline on whether or not to go for two or to line up and kick. Another look at uh, Holtz over the left side and running behind number 64. Matt Metz, that's one of 27 seniors, just getting a surge and hard to stop him with the goal line. Well, Everything you take a timeout, moving. John, you know, going to waste a timeout once you come back out and go for two. I think, well, nope, I see the T. I saw the T also in his hand, so try to make it a 7-0 contest as the Rangers go 60 yards on that drive. Wingerski will line it up. Wind's kind of calmed down a little bit since. And they fake it. It's a fake, a well-planned fake, and it's picked off and dropped. That's okay. That reminded me of the LSU play that Miles ran a few years ago where the holder flips it up in the air as one of the blockers from the weak side come around to the back and Watch it again. Yeah, in essence, it's an end around. And then the pass, and just a little bit uh, short. Really, everybody was covered. Yeah, they did a fine job defensively. Credit number 18, Daniel Allen. He didn't get sucked in at all on that play and made a good run on it. And if, and if you're going to throw a pass like that, you can't wait very long. You've got to hit them while they make their move. And, and the Tigers get the job done, and they're only down by six at the 413 mark of the first quarter. Rangers open the year by shutting out 
the Volunteers of Arlington Bowie, 35 nothing. Their only loss is to Plano East, 57-42. And again, the Rangers come in averaging almost 39 points a game. Funny, a year ago, Jesuit gave up 872 yards of offense to Bowie, lost 72 to 49. Of course, uh, the fact that former quarterback Tony James is now a freshman at TCU, you know, he he lit him up last year, ball going off the tee. That win, speaking of TCU, that is where the head coach Hickman from Jesuit went to. He said he got calls from all over the place. Uh, one of the coaches still at TCU that was there when he played back in the 90s and a teammate of his is on the staff. Both texted him last week with the congratulations of their win over the Raiders. All right, here we go again. It's going to be a short one against the win and filled it at about the 16-yard line. And put down there was Daniel Allen. Daniel back on the return team. And the tackle made by Fletcher Rosenbleeth, sophomore wide receiver, special team ace. And now let's see if we can get the Tigers to do something offensively. John Pretty, the Strong safety leads the team in tackles with 25. And then you've got uh, uh, Dane Bender in the middle with uh, 24 stops this year. That's John Michael Pretty, oh, okay. by the way. Three names. <laughs> he is a, a Michigan recruit in lacrosse. Just came out this year to play DB, and coach is glad he has. There's a handoff right side. Miles. Miles doesn't get much. We see three flags, I think, thrown, at, at least two. The referee and the... Uh, the line judge who may have a face mask, and if that's the case, that'll yep, work in favor of the Irving Tigers and give them 15 yards and put them down about the 40-yard line. Well, that's not a bad start from the 25 to the 40. During the play, partial foul face mask, number Irving 34 on the defense. Year. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Irving at home this year, 0-2. Ryan Brooks charged with the face mask there. Jesuit now number 11 in the Metroplex. Still not ranked in the state. In fact, they hardly have anyone on their team individually that ranks in statistics. Little crossing pattern complete. Just barreling across for the first down. Coming in to make the play is Markel Cooks. They got him out there just in that play as a tight end. And this guy can motor and bowl over people, John. Yeah, Stevenson just coming over the top, able to spot number nine across the middle. And a nice pickup. Remember, Stevenson just took over a couple of weeks ago for this offense, and he can make some plays with his legs, not really, you know, getting yardage downfield so much, but he can extend the play in the backfield as a quarterback trying to evade the rush. So it's first down inside Jesuits territory. They give it to Miles, and there's not much there. Miles upended by the defensive lineman Ryan Brooks, a senior, number 34. And nobody picked up Brooks, just had a wide open path to the running back. Lost at four. You can see nobody in there to block at all. Well, either a mix up of an assignment, obviously, or they were hoping that maybe he would go a different direction for the fake, but it took so long to develop. He was there, fake or not. Lose about five on the play. Second down. They got their win to the back for another two and a half minutes or so. Stevenson waits, waits. He's got a guy crossing, trying to get Markell or uh, Jacoby Johnson. And it's picked up. Is it going to be Jack Metz has it? Is it going to be a fumble or? And now we got a couple of flags Here after they the play. Yep. Raining yellow got two and three flags up in the air. Well, Mario Diaz, the offensive lineman, got got all tied up with one of the defensive linemen for Jesuit. But I guess they're going to call that a fumble, and it's going to be picked up by the Rangers. And that's going to go against Diaz. After the play, they'll just add on top of that. So the first turnover of the night, Tigers were scrimmaging near midfield, and that uh, has evaporated, and it's going to put this close to the 25-yard line. Let's see what the referee, Maxson, has to tell us. After he gets the beanbag set and the flag, get his equipment ready. 
play, there was a turnover. After the play, unsports black conduct, number 77 on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the related well, let's run. Let's watch the First replay down. again how this all unfolds. And yep, they just knocked it out of his hand. Trying to get a number, Peyton Long. We just talked about Peyton going to the Naval Academy. He's the one that knocked it out of the hands of Stevenson. So first and 10, Polish, the lefty, far corner of the end zone, incomplete. Coverage back by Kirkland. Yeah, Kirkland smothered him. Nice coverage as they try to go deep. Yeah, Rusty Landon, the intended receiver, the senior. Tried to run that fade route. A lot of air underneath it, got it right to him, but well covered. And it'll be second down. You know, Polish led the JV team to a eight and two record last year. Fakes the handoff. He's got two guys in the flats. Decides to go on the near sideline and that's incomplete. Through behind uh, Longborough number 13. He has a touchdown catch this year. Max is one of his favorite receivers, Max and Connor Lanford. Both of those guys are seniors as Delatore looks on. Big stop here on third and 10. First time they run three men to the near and one to the top. So that usually means single coverage on the short side of the field. And they just give to Holtz up the middle. Well designed play, Holtz at the 10, the five penalty flag. May have a hold called against the Rangers. And this will send it back and make it another third and long. I like the call though. The oh, draw, excellent. The draw play on third and 10. Trying to keep Irving off balance. Boy, he had a lot of daylight, didn't he? Looked like he had an escort with the two guards right up front. Yeah, it was soft up the middle. During the play, holding number 13 on the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still third down. Well, that's Lawborough called for the hold, and that'll bring him back. Let's see if we can pick it up. Lawborough's 13. Out of the picture now. Maybe right there, right yep. there. You could see him toward the end. In the middle. Yeah. Yep. Into the play, trying to seal off the safety. You know, when you're out in the middle, you can't hide, John. <laughs> yeah, nowhere to go, and... Uh, Nowhere at all to hide, but that penalty, in essence, is just back to the line of scrimmage. So from the point of the foul, it's about the same yardage needed here on third. Yeah, almost like a do-over, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Third and about nine. This time they split two to the top and two to the bottom. Holt stays in to block. Crossing pattern. Caught. Touchdown, number 13, Lawborough. Second touchdown catch of the year. The second completion for... Uh, Jacob Polish and his ninth touchdown pass overall. Just a slant pattern and a bullet throw. Lawborough makes up for that holding penalty on the very next play. Well, they run really good routes. Well coached, they're gonna go for two. It appears, two on the near side and a penalty flag. The center double clutched. Well, they flinched, yeah. Illegal snap, number three on the offense, five yard penalty. We'll have Landon. one more try. Number three is the center when they do that split lineup for the extra point. It's like the ball got caught on the turf or, or something of that nature. And so he goes from the center in one particular formation to the holder in the next. And Wangerski, John Wangerski will set it up I just like saying Winnie Gerst. <laughs> like that three syllable name. Uh -huh. And the kick looks pretty good from this angle. And it is. All right, another look at uh, Polish as he drops back in the pocket. Great protection, nobody near him, and just uh, fires a strike to number 13 at the four yard line. Ground level, good form, follow through, and. Nice play to finish it off. Thursday night games, MacArthur, they're still in the hunt. They're still in tied with Jesuit for first place in district with a 50-24 win over R.L. Turner. Sunset loses yet again this to the Longhorns of W.T. White, 46 zip. So MacArthur now 3-0 in district. Nimitz with the game tonight. 
and Jesuit trying to keep pace. Now let's check the current standings in 9-6A. Mack, Nimitz, and Jesuit all unbeaten. And here's the hard spot. You got White and Skyline at 2-1 and 1-1. One and one and one. Next This week and next week, really positioning for postseason play. You have a lot of third and fourth place uh, possibilities in the next couple of weeks. Irving, R.L. Turner, and Sunset, the bottom third. I think we have five teams in all honesty that will be fighting for those four playoff spots. And I, I said this before the district season started, and I still really think that that last spot will come down between Nimitz and White. Those are the, the two teams that will be going for that final spot. We've got a game here in about three weeks where Jesuit will play MacArthur. Cannot wait for that game for us to do on ICTN. Here's the kickoff. Near side, there's some running room. Miles across the 50 and run out of bounds with a great return. Some pushing and shoving afterwards. But he took it from one side to the other. Yeah, 52 yards on the return as he crisscrosses. Gets some nice blocking right here. Then cuts to the outside. And just a foot race here to the final 15 yards. He's deceptively fast, wouldn't you say? Yeah, oh, yeah. He runs just as fast as he needs to. You know, he <laughs> well, that'll set up the Tigers in pretty good space, about the 38 of the Rangers. Our third possession here in the first quarter. I mean, you know, you're still, you're only down by 13, but you get to a point here sooner or later, you've got to make something happen offensively. That's the whole thing in the nutshell as Stevenson takes the handoff, goes right side and tingling. A new face we've seen in the backfield for De La Torre and company and some bodies pushing and shoving after the play, getting a little chippy out there, Mr. Nelson. Well, that near side was rather compressed and you got a few words exchanged here, homecoming night. All kinds of decorations here. That's a mom, week. that's a mom, John. Wait a minute, that's yes. a, that's a Five yes. flower, that's a five flower mark. Yeah, they cover the whole body now. <laughs> what happened to just the little single one, you know, near their shoulder? Now it's just, you can't even, you don't even know who the girl is. The, the, <laughs> the mom's all over him. Delatore having to use practically everyone on his bench. Goes to Tiglin again to the left side. He's more or less like a big old fullback. Jordan, a sophomore, his brother, Jonathan. Also plays uh, on the defensive side, and they did that more or less just to give Miles a rest. And Miles said, oh, "Get me back out there," and Jordan will will take a breather. Well, you're right. With well, the injuries out for the year with the Cayenne's Hall and that Brandon Hearn, what a tough week of practice for the Tigers. Got about nine sophomores on this varsity team. Don't hear that a lot unless you're down to. 4A and 3A, where they have to bring up the kids oftentimes. Third and about eight, need a big play. Stevenson dumped back at his 47. Couldn't get that one out. First, number two got to him first. That's Peyton Long. Peyton has made quite a few plays already tonight, just in the first quarter. He's got to get rid of it about there. Well, here comes Long. I mean, when they blitz, you've got to find a, a quick safety valve and a quick dump off. And that just didn't happen there. So we finish a quarter of football. Jesuit 13, Irving nothing. Back to the second quarter in a moment. Welcome back to the second quarter. Irving down 13 zip will have to go for it on fourth down and about 20 high snap, plenty of time. And they kick away. The ball will die and watching it there is Esteban Garcia as the Tigers lay that one to rest at the 17 and that's where this Ranger offense, which is, I would say methodical. That's how I would call them. Very methodical in their approach. I don't think they really have someone that can 
break it open with the big play per se. They just march it down the field with great precision. Polish completing over 60% of his passes coming in. More importantly, besides the eight touchdowns coming in, John, I think though, just one interception. That stands out, yeah, talking to the personnel about that very stat for the game. So let's see what Polish and company decide, or Polish and company decide here. And a little flea flicker. They got a guy here on the near sideline. They air it out, and it's caught and then knocked away at the last minute. Defensively, a great play by number 29, Emmanuel Pruitt, who got his hand in there just in the nick of time to knock that out of the paws of Rusty Landon, their big wide receiver. Yeah, Landon, another receiver that has a catch this year, was open over the shoulder and kind of a one-on-one -on -one pull down there. Yeah, Pruitt, really good job. Mm -hmm. Once the ball got in his hand to knock it away, and it's an incomplete pass. So the Rangers trying to go for the home run on the first play from scrimmage. They'll probably go more base this time. They fake one direction. They run that wide receiver screen. Boy, they had half the guys out blocking, and it's completed for the first down to Connor Lamford. Going to see a lot more of him before the night's over. Almost a whisker from having about half the offensive lineman downfield before he caught that. They do really run well-designed plays. They, they made it look and appear it was going to be a wide receiver screen to the near, kind of trying to flush the defense to one side and get them leaning, and then they went right back to the their side of the field for the first down. Handoff. No, they faked the handoff. Nobody is home. They pulled a the guy down. We're going to have a flag or not. Had some contact, but I think their feet just got crossed up. Yeah, Pruitt uh, once again tied up with the big man, Connor Lamfer. And it's nothing but an incomplete pass. If you're a Ranger fan, you were probably hoping for a, a pass interference, but they did get their legs tangled at the 40. Polish now four of eight in passing, and again came in with a 60% completion rate, up 13-0. Everybody's heard of Jordan Spieth. Well, he went to this same school Jesuit, you know, they would be a, a 4A school based on their enrollment if it wasn't based on uh, what the UIL telling them to do. Polish maybe a couple of yards up the middle. Hammered by 43, Aiden Reynolds, the defensive tackle, junior. Now, three years ago, this team had Jake Oliver, now a wide receiver at the University of Texas. Outstanding high school career. He had a Jesuit, Jake Oliver. Well, you know, I know who Kenny Cooper is, a soccer standout, and he's mm -hmm. also a grad. But the way Spieth has torn up the golfing world, everybody knows. My mom knows who George was. <laughs> Another pass completed across the far sideline to Lawborough. Max had plenty of room to work, too, John. All the time. and. You can see how far away the DB was, giving him a good seven-yard cushion. That was uh, Cabello. Yeah, Cabello, again, a sophomore. You're going to hear me say that time and time again, but that's what Delatore and these Tiger coaches are, are dealt with. Just a lot of youngsters learning under fire. Right up the pipe, Holtz. Holtz is six, seven yards. Overall, there are 200 kids that play football for Jesuit. That's from the couple of freshman teams to the JV to the varsity. And coach told me earlier, he said, you know, if we can just stay healthy. They've got one player not in, and that's their captain, Austin Kaler. Broke a wrist earlier in the year. They thought he'd be back by week nine, but he got his cast off this week. And they're hoping he'll be ready for Mac in three weeks. Saw him at the coin toss. Yep, he was out in the middle. Polish, the rush is on, he gets tipped at the last minute. Well done that time by number nine. Markel Cooks, the linebacker, got his big paws in the air and knocked that one down. I don't know why more players don't put their hands in the air just like that. Three of them right up the middle. And Cooks with the great anticipation right up the height of the ball. As soon as he let it go, that's when you have to get the hands up. So here's another one of those third down plays that seem to bite the Tigers. They do well up into that point. 
got a guy doing a little out pattern. He's covered. And Polish looks like he edged his way past the yard marker. Picks up another first down for the Rangers. Needed four and collects five. Rangers last year beat the Tigers and never lost to Irving. Three and oh, all time against Irving. And big win last year, a high scoring contest at 56 29. They're just around 50% overall on third down conversions. They keep the ball and the lead and the wins to their back. Maybe that's why Polish is throwing more and more and maybe a little mix up there on running a route. Trying to hit Marlboro again. I asked the coach if he thought there would be a letdown after such a big win last week against Skyline and then facing a team like Irving, who's still looking for that first win of the year. And, you know, in the great coach speak that there is, it's like, you know, oh, no, we're, you know, our guys are prepared. But he said they had good practices. He felt the intensity was there and didn't even have to inject any enthusiasm that his team was well focused. Holtz left side. First guy misses, but the second doesn't. Kevin Kirkland. DB, DB come up to make the stop. He, he was first hit by Zamora. Yeah, he influenced the play towards yep. the sidelines. Zamora first, Kirkland second. Zamora, again, one of those kids that just starting to play more and more because of injuries, and he fights off the block there. Just slows him down long enough for Kirkland to make the play. Yeah, held him up just enough to upset the timing. And Holtz taken down. Did stop the clock. Tigers in a semi-prevent defense with three safeties back right about at the first down marker, and it doesn't do any good because they hit Lamfer for a first down. Right on the fingertips and in full stride. And a nice pickup of 16-plus. Pick up the tempo just a little bit. Right up the middle, far side, another first down and a penalty flag. A couple, three of those, <laughs> they're coming from everywhere. Irving trying to get in some personnel, some more. I may have had a hand near the mask or maybe enough to pull it down. Wait for the call. That will be half the distance from the end of the run, automatic first down. Markell guilty of grabbing the face mask. Watch number nine right up your screen. He's now in the middle. Look at him reach right there. And yeah, that's a full blown 15 yarder for sure. He earned his 15 yarder on that one. Larborough though gets the first down. They had more with the penalty. Now they're in the red zone once again. That's uh, the fifth penalty tonight for the Tigers. Larborough came in with just over 100 yards rushing. He's Pretty close to that already. First and goal, that is incomplete. Far sideline, maybe a little low. Cabello in on the coverage. Tried to hit Rusty Landon. Yeah, besides Holtz in the backfield, Lawborough is the guy that seems to get a lot of attention and, and gets to do the extra runs. He was third on the team in rushing coming in with four touchdowns. Averaging about three yards every time he touched the ball. Surprised we haven't seen Polish run much tonight. And here's some disruption in the backfield and well done by the Tiger defense. Sanders, number 41. Boy, he's had a good season. Austin disrupting things. Well, second down eight, you lose three. And uh, yeah, everything all over the place. Nice surge defensively. Stop it to play here. And Irving's taking a timeout. They have. Yeah, and you know, it's the third down bugaboo. Mm. Just to be honest with you, they could delete third downs in their repertoire. I think they would be competitive, but it's just those third and longs. Case in point, the last time that Jesuit had that third and long around midfield, and they put three safeties back, not just two, but three. When he went back to pass, all three kind of stayed their ground and he threw underneath it. And by the time they could react, the receiver had the first down. Well, you know, this draw play, <laughs> this is a perfect call again for that draw play. Third and 11, you have the wind at your back at worst, what, 25-yard uh, field goal, 30? 
So they uh, be pretty selective here on third down. Yeah, and with the win to their back. Mm -hmm. It's a two club wind. If you, if you hit a nine, hit a seven iron tonight because it has picked up. All right, third and goal. Little pump fake into the corner. That's way too far. Incomplete. And that'll set up the fourth down play. That was Lamfer was the intended receiver. Irving didn't bite on the fake. Lamfer maybe with a couple of steps on the DB, but by the time he broke free, he ran out of playing field. So they're going to bring in your favorite last name player here. It's going to be the kicker, Wingerski. Probably set the tee up. 28 yard attempt. Landon does the holding. Pretty much straight away. I mean, it's shaded to the far hash mark. A look at it from the end zone. It looks pretty good from here. And three points surrendered by Irving, but not a bad defensive stand by the Tigers. No, it's not at all. Uh, you're down close and Joshua goes 73 yards on the drive. So you hold them to three. It's still a two possession game here. You know, you take your bright spots when you can. When mm -hmm. you're a team that has struggled like they have and they haven't won any games this year and they've got so many youngsters out there trying to make a name and, and learn the game, they, uh, they take the, the moral victories and the defense did the job there. Kept it intact, 16 nothing. I know a lot of people thought uh, it would be a four touchdown lead by the break. Still may be, I mean, there's you know close to eight minutes to go, but at this point, it goes back to trying to get the offense, the offense in gear. Well, that fumble really, really hurt the Tigers at the moment they were down six nothing. Set up a 19 yard touchdown pass. Suddenly a 13-0 game. The good news for Irving is after tonight's game, some of the beatable teams they will face, maybe break that losing skid. That goes out of bounds. That'll be a penalty. Irving will have the ball in about, what, the 25. So far this year, John, you can see where, you know, they're going to give up the points, but they can't score any. You know, some of these teams, you, they lose, but, you know, the offense tries to keep them in there, but they just haven't hit their stride offensively. But the last two teams, Skyline MacArthur and then tonight Jesuit, you know, the top three teams in the district, they have to face right off the bat. They can come out of this healthy then perhaps things can turn around a little bit for D.J. Stevenson. Oh, now you start from the 30. You've got uh, three sophomores and a freshman on your offense. Mm -hmm. And here they come. And they fake to Miles, and Stevenson tries to go up the middle. That play a little slow to develop. I think Miles wanted to keep that football. Both outside ends released. Trying to jam it up, and they did, and an offensive lineman down. That's uh, Rojo, the center. Christian Rojo, and things just keep dominoing in the wrong direction. Let's see if you can see. Ah, oh, right there, C64. He was engaged in a block, and somebody rolled up behind him. That's the thing about offensive linemen. You're doing your job. You don't know what's going to come from behind you. And Steven Stucker, number 73, has come on. He was injured a couple of weeks ago himself. Yeah, they move things around. He comes in at, at the right side, and they move Diaz over to center. A little wincing pain. Next week on IC10, we finish up our homecoming. And it'll be MacArthur as they host the Bison of Sunset. We'll see them. That'll be a Thursday game. And the replay times Sunday through Thursday at different times on ICTN. Bison's in the cards. So when play resumes, second down and 10. Irving against the wind. They're in the dark uniforms. The gold helmets. A lot of gold out there tonight. 
It's an Army-Navy game. Yeah, <laughs> or Notre Dame-Navy here. <laughs> Miles wrapped up. That'll be about a loss of five. Number 34, Ryan Brooks, one of the team captains, the outside defensive left in. Coach Hickman said they switched to a 3-4 a couple of years ago. and You know, sometimes it's just a blown assignment on the Irving side that causes havoc. It's not that you, you got beat. It's just that you didn't block who you were supposed to. So in that, they're in that situation, third down and long, three to the top. Stevenson, a little more time, waits, waits, pushes that one, and it's incomplete. Broke up, tried to hit the tight end, Reuben Demis, number 32, or 82. Stevenson, Stevenson pretty much forced that one, but he got time this time, John. Yeah, he's coming across the middle, kind of dances, kind of dances. He'll throw on the run and delivers a pretty good ball. Oh, Ooh, did, I, it looked look. like he got hit before the ball got there. Uh, definite contact as Nate Thompson, would you say, arrived a little early? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tigers go to punt, and this is a bad one. It goes straight up with the backwards roll. No one knows where the ball is at. It's going to come back. It's going to end up being about a two-yard kick, John. Well, it kind of got the wedge up in the air on a two-tiered green, caught the down slope, and <laughs> the backspin pushes it inside the 30-yard line. It was on the 25, so that's, uh, what, four yards? You've been playing a lot of golf this <laughs> week? Uh, practice range golf. Not competitive, just practice. Halftime, it is homecoming. Stay with us. John Nelson will walk you through the homecoming king and queen in court. I always do the king at the dance, but the queen will be announced tonight, and you see everyone all dressed up. It's the only time you dress up to go to a football game, that's for sure. Unless you're in one of those expensive suites at Jerry World. Haven't been to one. <laughs> have you taken the tour? <laughs> have you taken the I tour? I have two place? years ago. I did. did you? I really did. <laughs> did you do the one on your own or the one that where they escorted you and you had a tour guide? Solo. You did the solo. All right. Polish. Rocks and Fires has a man wide open and a touchdown. Number three is Rusty Landon. He just ran the streak and Polish had all day to throw and that was like a rainbow. The thing just fell from the sky right in Lust Rusty's hands for the touchdown. Wasting no time, Landon split out wide to the left and here's this uh, funky alignment here on the conversion. I think they're going to try to go for it again. Okay. If it all out there, they've failed on it twice. Landon goes here to the near side, and that is out of the end zone, incomplete. Tried to hit Connor Lamp for number seven. Just waited a little too long to throw that one, and again, let's watch the touchdown, Nelson. Yeah, that pass hung up too long as Pallet fakes in the middle, and they bite on Holtz, and just one-on-one -on -one coverage, and. Uh, Again, wide open as soon as he left the line of scrimmage. Rusty Landon. Nice rainbow toss. Anybody could have caught that one. Fell right into his hands. Well thrown, well played. You know, shoot, just uh, I think if you're your Jesuit tonight, you think about, well, we made a little too many penalties. That's one thing we'd like to clean up. But and that's just a pitch and catch. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> But, you know, clean up the penalties, and let's just kick extra points from now on. I think, you know, you, you got to be happy with what's happened here in the first half. Well, let's see. Palish now 8 of 15. He's just getting warmed up. Jesuit soccer team became the first private school to earn a UIL state championship when they won the 5A title back in 2010. You know, they, they've done it right. You know, they've said, whatever, wherever you want to put us, we're ready to do that. We want to, we want to play stronger competition, and they're doing it. Miles overran that one. It'll go into the end zone as a touchback. Touchback. And Irving will try to regroup when they start off first and ten. But to amplify your uh, points about waiting to 
probably go into another district, but they're competitive in all sports. I mean, the table is set. May not win championships in everything, but uh, competitive in every sport. Had a great baseball team last year. Yeah, went about three rounds deep, I believe. All right, Miles still in at running back. Stevenson will look things over. Fifth possession of the half. We'll see if they stick to the ground, and they do. Miles left, has got a hole. Running room, 30. Tugged from behind the 34, brought down by number 12, John Michael Pretty. He was dragged down after a nine-yard pickup and a nice gain on first down, but they've just got to keep it going. They've got to collect the first downs and get some of these chunks of yardage like this. Miles running left, just pulled down by the shirt tail. Thought that's a quarterback, but it's number no one. Oh, yeah, pretty. <laughs> I thought, wait a minute, number 17 in there. <laughs> Second down in, a, in about one. They go to Miles again. He's got the first down, legs turning, about in five, six yards. And really, he was about a step shy of really breaking up big yardage on that play. Well, they run to the left, they run to the right. Let's see if they go back to the left this time. Third first down for uh, Irving. Kind of stumbles, Miles right at himself. He's still kind of off balance, but uh, does pick up the first down. Rojo back in at center. That's good. Yep, glad to see him bounce back. Split to the near side is Jabari Johnson. Real tall wide receiver. They'd love to get him the ball if they could. Miles. Reels off another five yards. He's a workhorse, had the last three carries. And that time taking good over right tackle. I always thought that if they would just attack the line quickly and not try to do any of those plays that take time to develop, mm -hmm. that they could be a little more successful at it. And especially with Miles being a strong running back, just go between the tackles straight ahead. Don't run outside like this. That gets you caught up every time. Not much at all. Nate Thompson, number one, coming up to make the tackle. And Miles will take the helmet off and sit down a little bit here as it's third down and five. Lost the helmet and Coach Delatore doesn't want to come out, but he has to. You know, a coaching moment and a teaching moment, I think, for, yeah. for De La Torre. It's all about hitting the hole. You just, you just can't go sideline to sideline. You can't go east-west. you got to go north-south. you got to make it count. you got to go down the middle. It looks like there was some movement. And thank goodness for Stevenson because they were bringing the house. That far side may have jumped early. The thing about the 3-4, is you don't know snap, what linebacker the they're going to send sometimes. Still third down. Tigers move first. It'll cost them five. There's yeah, six yeah. penalty. That right side, one of the three receivers split to that top last time. Nudged a little bit, anticipating the count. The three sacks have really hurt Stevenson tonight in the first half. It killed two drives. Now facing third and ball. Bring an extra player in tight so they run the double tight end set. Now the left guard moves. That'll be number 65, Dylan Ross. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, five yard he penalty. Made a little movement. Still third down. Five more back. The old, it's a five and dime. Five and dime <laughs> stores <laughs> over. Oh, man. Give you gray hair and ulcers as a coach. You put a couple of good plays together. You move the chains, and then next thing you know, you look up, and it's third down and, and 15. Yeah, you started from the 25. You've only gained 10 yards now. Jordan Tinglin now in at running back. The lefty fires to the near side. Johnson with the catch. About six yards in all. That'll be way shy of the first down. Jabari, the freshman. Number four, Coach is really can't wait to see him mature as a player and try to get him the ball more in the open field. And a timeout here with 2.45 to go in the half. Jesuit taking its second timeout, so each team down to one. 
seven penalties already in the first half. Assessed to Irving. Is it home sweet home? Well, maybe so. This is what the Rangers have done here at ISS. Perfect 4 0. One close one, 0 7 with Nimitz, won by just three. Mack last year, it was only seven, so in 06 and 07, pretty close, but that last one in 14. They handled the Vikings rather well. I think the Vikings are struggling tonight. I hate to hear that. But you know they're playing Skyline, so and Skyline will be ready to bounce back after their upset loss last week. Fourth and 11. After the timeout, Irving will have to punt against the win, but a, a low liner and fumbled at the 36-yard line and picked back up again by Garcia. And Garcia is wrapped up, put down by Yvonne Garcia, number 20, right at the 44-yard line. Trying to work himself back towards the middle of the field and pick up some blocking. He picked up a couple of blocks. And you start at the 45, win at your back, and 2.32 to go in the first half. And one timeout in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. So if you're Irving, you don't want to get beat deep. You want to keep the offensive players in front of you. Don't forget uh, Landon, the tall receiver. He's to the top of your screen. Larboro in the backfield. They're going straight back. Polish looks right, throws left, tries to hit Landon. Incomplete. It hung up, and Landon double covered. And again, Joshua trying to go deep on first and 10. Trying to get it all. Put a lot of air under that one. And uh, it gave the Tiger defenders a chance to make up ground and make the play defensively. Stops the clock with 2.24. Kind of a break for the Tigers. No gain on that play. Second 10, again, quick hitter, complete. 10 yard pickup, Lawboro right in the slot. Nothing fancy about it, about a little five yard pattern. They try to split the seam and did so for the first down. The clock starts back up again, only one time outlet. Lampier to the near side and a penalty flag. I don't think they were set. Line never got set. Five yard penalty, still first down. And that'll move them back five yards and a break for the Tigers. Their fourth flag, roaming the sidelines, looking for bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised they don't, in this 39 sheet, Stat sheet, I'm surprised they don't have, uh, you know, how many uh, penalties they've had in under two minutes of the game, not inside the red zone. <laughs> That's like the baseball stat now on any home run. Bat velocity, exit speed, and hang time. Oh. <laughs> Who comes up with that? I don't know, but baseball's the worst on stats. Polish, deep side, two guys to defend. It goes out of bounds, no flag, incomplete pass. Trying to hit Loughborough again. And again, a break for Irving. It stops the clock. No gain of anything. And back to the line of scrimmage. Just had no chance of being complete. It was out of bounds had he caught it. The last couple of possessions, the Rangers have really just tried to hit the home run. And it's usually Lamper or Loughborough, traditionally. 13 and 7 are his two favorite receivers. Wonderlich. I don't know if they've thrown in his direction tonight. Hmm. Pass on the far sideline, complete. Oh, nice little nifty move. And knocked out of bounds, but not until they get a first down. Oh, reaching back and able to bring it in. Another catch tonight for Max, who has uh, two touchdown catches, but goes up high and able to stay in bounds. He knows he's going to take a hit, but picks up 16. Yep, not quite the first down. Yeah. Be third down in about two, but that was a nice catch by the senior. Third and short. First down picked up by Adam Holtz. He does the dirty work. He runs between the tackles. He keeps the defensive players honest that I am. we are going to run it on occasion up the middle. 
but be prepared because most of the time we're going to throw it. First down and 10. Quick fire, far sideline, caught. Again, Loftborough. And they just, it's like a Z back or an H back. Nothing fancy about that, just about eight yards and out. Find the sideline, stop the clock, and that's what he's done. Well, I like the way he drops back and just gets rid of it as quick as possible. Yeah, it really doesn't give the D line much of an effort. That was one thing that Coach Hickman said he he saw that the Tigers could really do well, and that's rush the quarterback. Here's a different formation for the first time tonight. Two receivers to the near side, or they run a an offensive lineman. They got an offensive lineman on each side and only three offensive linemen in the middle, and they give it to Holtz. And Holtz will get a first down. A unique formation where both the tackles, the left tackle split wide out to the left, the right tackle wide out to the right, and that just left the center and two guards. Look at that. And they did have seven men on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's, that's a nice play. It's a New England Patriot play. It's a Bill Belichick playbook. First down inside the 20. Pass is caught. Two missed tackles. There's some running room on the near side. Still on his feet. Twists and turns. And Kevin Kirkland finally brings him down as Connor Lamfer is close to another first down for the Rangers. All that running, and I believe they're going to give him 10 on it. Spites off one, a head fake here, jukes another. <laughs> Still on his feet. Finally spun down and thrown down by Kirkland. And going to be a yard short. Jesuit calling their last time out of the first half. Interesting part of that offensive play is that it was designed to go far side, short side of the field. As soon as he caught it, he bolted to the near side, trying to make some room. Jesuit has a band. They bring the drill team and, uh, and their cheerleaders. They, they get the gals from Ursuline, the Ursuline Academy. Come over to participate. Is that more your style here? Is that more the traditional mom? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just one hanging down. There's the Ursuline girls. The Rangerettes, not Kilgore. They're ready to perform at half. All right, so when we get back to action, no timeouts for Jesuit. 48 seconds, plenty of time on the clock. I'm guessing they're going to try to throw. And there's a lot of room. Polish dives in for the touchdown. Somersault. And Polish, who has collected uh, Polish keeps on the well, seven on touchdowns on the grass, is fourth, his fourth touchdown rushing this year. Everybody covered on the left side, turned it back against the green, and somersaults over the double shot. So it only took one play after the timeout. And this time, I think. Jesuit has decided, you know, maybe we ought to just stick with the extra point. They got a good kicker. It's true. And with 40 seconds to go, it's now 28 0. Here's a touchdown again. He's got plenty of room on the near side, John. Yeah, looks off a couple and uh, evades the defender there at the three and just hurdles into the end zone. Here's a ground level look. If you're a DB, you're trying to close in, but where do you go? Well, Polish uh, ends all doubt. Not to be denied. Deceptive speed. It seems like he puts it in another gear when he gets close to the end zone. Yeah, he kind of does. He steps it up. Overdrive. Irving will get the ball to start the second half. Let's see if they just set on this to end the first half. Kirkland going back deep along with Miles, number 35. Miles on your right, Kirkland on your left. So the Irving kids out. With the win to his back, more than likely Wingerski will knock this one out of the end zone unless the coaches have told him just to kind of squib kick this and keep Irving from returning it, but they're gonna return it. Had a shot, goes into the end zone, and Kirkland 
chase that one down and into where the band's at. So Irving will have it first and 10 on their own 25 as you take a look at Coach Hickman, fifth year, 38-15. Offensive line coach for five years, was an offensive coordinator at North Garland and J.J. Pierce. Played at TCU two years. Before that, he was at Tyler Junior College. The Apaches. Nice little campus in Tyler for a junior college. It's improved. All right, first down. And it's just a handoff to Miles, who goes left. Runs over linebacker Keaton Long. Puts a shoulder in there, but Long has his support of his teammates to finish it off, and that should be the last play of the first half. Miles <laughs> looked like he's going through a turnstile during Christmas shopping. I mean, he was hit by three and four different players. <laughs> Whack from every side. It'll be that time of year before you know it. A well, Halloween? Yeah, Christmas. Second and 10. Give to Miles again, right side, tippy toes, and Cuts up to the middle, and that will do it. We finish a half a ball. Jesuit 29, Irving nothing. Back with the second half in a moment. And back at Irving School Stadium, halftime, the Jesuit Rangers leading the Irving Tigers 29-0 in this District 9-6A matchup. Well, the Irving Band, the Toy Tigers, and the halftime activity is about to commence. Let's go down to the field. This is Irving High 76th Annual Homecoming. We are continuing a 106-year-old tradition of school spirit and loyalty with this halftime program. Our student council chose for this week's homecoming activity a circus theme, Under the Trapeze. Students have participated this week in Dress Up Theme Day, such as Animal Print Day on Monday, Tuesday, 90s Day, Disney Wednesday, Thursday, Circus Day slash Sunglasses, and today's Formal Day, where students dress their best. The hallways of the school were decked out for the circus. Winning hallway decorations were made by Ms. N, FCCLA Club, and the senior class. Homecoming festivities have also included the parade, which was a big success yesterday morning. Our grand marshal of the parade was school board president Randy Randall. The pep rally and bonfire was last night with senior recognition for football, tiger band, cheerleaders, toy tigers, tiger fever, and tiger guard, and the culminating with the traditional burning of the eye. The bonfire and burning of the eye was facilitated by our Marine Corps Junior ROTC Battalion and its instructors. The homecoming dance is scheduled for tomorrow night from 7 o'clock until 11 o'clock at the Wyndham Garden Hotel in Dallas, which is located on LBJ Freeway near Sam Moon. Tickets may be purchased at the door for $35 each. The float winners from the parade yesterday were in third place receiving $25 Junior ROTC. In second place receiving $50, there was a tie between girls basketball and the student trainers. And in first place, receiving $75, Tiger Cheerleaders. Also, honorable mention goes to FTCLA and KIRV. Congratulations to all our float winners. And now we turn our attention to the highlight of homecoming. As in past years,
Homecoming 2015 at Irving School Stadium. Jesuit leading the Irving Tigers 29-0. The band is ready. The Toy Tigers out. Halftime activity is about to commence. Let's go down to midfield. As our Tiger Band plays the ballad song from their contest show titled Appalachian Springs, we proudly present the 2015 Homecoming Court. Representing the freshman class, Princess Elizabeth Carzales. Elizabeth is the daughter of Angie and Martin Carzales and is escorted by her uncle, Marcus Rodriguez. Elizabeth is involved in recycling club, dance, and avid. She enjoys singing and playing volleyball and soccer. She would like to attend the New York School of Interior Design after graduation. Prince Chris Tamayo. Chris is the son of Stephanie Maloney, who is escorting him tonight. Chris is involved in football, basketball, baseball, and track. He plans to go to college and become an engineer. Princess Danielle Blanca. Danielle is the daughter of Janet Villasenor and Santos Mata and is escorted by her father. Danielle is in drama club and enjoys her theater class. She plays on the Texas Toro soccer team. She plans to become a neurologist and open her own practice. Prince Tyreek Johnson. Tyreek is the son of Denise Williams, who is escorting him. Tyreek is involved in football, wrestling, basketball, and track. After high school, he plans to attend college. Representing the sophomore class, Princess Nikki Bui. Nikki is the daughter of David and Tiffany Price and is escorted tonight by her father. Nikki is involved in gymnastics and drama club and plans to go to Stanford University and become an elementary school teacher. Prince Sebastian Dimas. Sebastian is the son of Antonio Dimas and Cynthia Vasquez who are escorting him. Sebastian plays football, basketball, and baseball. He plans to attend Texas A&M University and become a doctor. Princess Jacqueline Bustos Rivas. Jack Jacqueline is the daughter of Minerva Bustos and Hector Rivas. Her mother is escorting her tonight. Jacqueline is involved in Toy Tigers and GSA. She plans to attend Texas A&M to become a veterinarian. Prince Jaime Labrada. Jaime is the son of Rachel Quintero, who escorts him tonight. Jaime is on the JV football team and plans to become a model or an accountant or an artist. Representing the junior class, Princess Tiffany Colorado. Tiffany is the daughter of Carlos Colorado and Maria Mendoza and is escorted tonight by her father. Tiffany is involved in the cosmetology program and would like to attend Texas A&M University and pursue a career as a physical therapist. Prince Alec Caro. Alec is the son of Luis Caro and Alicia Montalongo and is escorted by his mother. Alec is involved in football and student council and has volunteered over 50 hours at John Haley Elementary School. He recently started a band where he, he is the bass player. He plans to attend UT Austin with a major in journalism or media communication. Princess Briseida Ponce. Briseida is the daughter of Alice and Eduardo Ponce and is escorted, is escorted by Mrs. Ellen Neville. Briseida is in varsity tennis and varsity cheer and wishes both of her teams luck this year. She also plays piano and saxophone. Her future plans are to attend Penn State University and major in aviation. Prince Christian Pineda. 
Christian is the son of Gudelia Pineda, who is escorting him tonight. He is involved in cross country and track and enjoys hanging out with his friends and family. After graduation, Christian plans to start a successful business. Representing the senior class are our Queen and King nominees. Queen nominee, Autumn Hernandez. Autumn is the daughter of Daniel Hernandez and Chaley Thompson and is escorted by her grandfather, Glenn Thompson. Autumn is the president of the senior class and enjoys making money, dancing, and freestyling. Her dreams include going to Texas Tech University to study public relations and becoming a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. King nominee, Luis Gonzalez. Luis is the son of Norma Gonzalez, who is escorting him tonight. He is one of the drum majors for the Irving Tiger Band, vice president of the chess club, and art director of Tiger Design Studios. Lewis plans to attend Texas A&M University in the fall as an electronics engineering technology major. Queen nominee, Georgette Cecilia Monsivayas. Georgette is the daughter of Jorge and Silvia Monsivayas and is escorted by her father. Georgette is on the varsity volleyball team, varsity track, varsity orchestra, academic decathlon, drama club, national honor society, and the giving back club. She is also involved at St. Luke's Catholic Church with the youth group, choir, and catechist. Future plans include attending UT Austin and becoming a nurse practitioner. King nominee, Andrew Christian Miller. Andy is the son of Janet and Tim Miller and is escorted by his mother. He is an active member of Drama Club, National Honor Society, French Club, and the Giving Back Club and is also involved in Theater, Tiger Guard, and KIRV TV. Andy plans to study musical theater in New York City after graduation. Queen nominee, Aaron Sanchez. Erin is the daughter of Tina Sanchez and Deshaun Bowler and is escorted by her parents and baby sister, Grayson. Erin is in Tiger Fever, student council, and plays basketball. She plans to go to college to become an athletic trainer. King nominee, Charlie Abrego. Charlie is the son of Rubia Salgado and Pedro Chicas and is escorted tonight by his mother. Charlie is a drum major for the Irving Tiger Band and is a member of HOSA, Academic Decathlon, and the Science Club. He plans to attend Columbia University in the fall with a major in biomedical engineering before attending medical school. And now, the moment we have all been waiting for. The 2015 homecoming queen is Miss Georgette Monsivayas. A football necklace, which is a gift of the student council, is being placed around her neck by student council president Paulette Acosta. The queen's bouquet is presented to her by Miss Ana Gomez, principal of Irving High School. Our 2014 homecoming queen, Miss Crystal Ortiz, will now crown the queen. Congratulations to all of the members of the homecoming court, and especially to Queen Georgette. And congratulations to Georgette Monsivayas, this year's homecoming queen at Irving High. Her Tigers trailing 29-0 to the Jesuit Rangers. Jesuit scoring first on their second possession as they cap off a 60-yard drive. Adam Holtz over left guard from four yards out, 6-0 with 4.13 to go in the opening period. Jacob Polish getting heated up, a 19-yard strike to Max Longborough with 
a minute 43 to go in the first quarter. 13-0, then it goes 16-0 on a field goal, then unpolished 28 yards to Rusty Landon with 6.06 to go in the first half. They're not done yet. Polish will take off over the right side and leapfrog into the end zone with just 40 seconds left in the first half and a 29-0 lead. The Tigers did get a, a long tick, a kickoff return in the uh, second quarter as Miles takes it some 62 yards. Miles with the longest uh, play from scrimmage <laughs> via a kickoff return. Then Miles over the right side for about seven more. And a workhorse Miles was in the first 24 minutes. Jesuit with 13 first downs. The Tigers had three. Tigers uh, in the passing department. Stevenson just two of four for 19 yards, 16 yards on the ground, 35 total. One turnover in the Tigers flag six times for 52 yards. And Jesuit with a 13 of 21 number for Polish, 100. And 67 yards, 254 total, no turnovers. The uh, Rangers flagged four times for 31 yards. Jesuit opened up a 13-0 lead, added 16 more in the second quarter. And the win has picked up even more during the uh, homecoming activities. It has uh, dropped in temperatures, but uh, I don't know if that's overdoing it. It's not quite blanket weather, but when you're facing the wind, maybe that feels pretty good. 29-0, back for the second half kickoff on our ICTN District Game of the Week. All right, welcome back, everyone. Nice halftime homecoming show. It's always fun to see the kids and the homecoming queen in her court as you take a look at some of the Irving High School cheerleaders. The Jesuit will kick off the win to their back in a four-touchdown lead here in the ball game. There's Georgette, the homecoming queen for this year. Big smile on her face, and why not? Big moment for her and her family. Oh, hugs around, hugs for everybody. Well, let's see if Irving can start this game off with a, or second half off with a nice kickoff run. Miles last time had that nice one. This time they kick away from Miles and opt to just down it in the end zone. Wisely so. And we'll see if any adjustments has been made by the Irving Tigers to start off the second half. Stevenson remains in at quarterback. He'll be joined back there by Markel Cooks, who saw limited action. Second leading tackler on the team also will play running back a time or two. And they have our tight end, and they have him slot to the bottom, second to the bottom of your screen with Miles in at quarterback and Stevenson again starting as well. Stevenson hands off to Miles. Miles left side, nice run, has some room. Penalty flag called, could be a hold there on the edge as Miles trucks it around for seven yards, but that is thrown in the vicinity of a holding by the offensive line. You know, we were talking at halftime, Rob, we haven't seen a Raquan Young number 31 tonight. During the play, holding number 44 on the offense. That's 10 yards from the Once previous again, spot. Once again, the fullback, first down. Nick Howard, also plays tight end, called for the hold. Bottom of your screen, 44, right there going against Jordan Rice. Really too bad, wipes out a six-yard run. Well, I see Hall on the sideline. We knew he wasn't going to play. With the bad leg. Don't see Young anywhere, but nonetheless, first down and 20. And this is the same thing that's haunted the Tigers all year. And he's wrapped up, Stevenson is, after a loss of five. Trying to make some things happen. And he's tackled by the defensive lineman Ryan Brooks, the defensive end. And the fourth sack tonight registered by the Jesuit Rangers as a DJ just looking for anything 
Well, you know, I don't want to take anything away from Jesuit, but when you've got a four touchdown lead and you know the guys have got a pass that you're facing, it's really easy to tee off on the line. And, and they don't send just three. They'll, they'll send the outside linebackers, and they're doing it again here. If Miles could just break that second tackle, he's got a lot of room to run. Miles on the carry. Tries to cut the outside corner. Yeah, Dane Bender, I believe, got to him first, number 16. He's the uh, second yeah, leading tackler on the, the team, but Miles line. takes a Third shot down, here. Then here comes uh, two and three more Rangers as they pile on. Yeah, he held them up just long enough for the reinforcements to arrive. Third down and, and ages here for the Tigers, going against the wind, down by four. We'll see if the uh, Jesuit squad throws in the second teamers here later on. Here's a long pass trying to hit Howard and it's intercepted at the 38 yard line. Picked off by John Michael Pretty and he has returned it inside the 15, inside the 10. One of the Tiger players hurt on the play as Pretty read that one and he just got up and got a lot of air underneath it and it enabled the safety to come over and make the play. The leading tackler on this team, the one who has played lacrosse most of his life and will probably end up going to Michigan as a lacrosse player, has the INT and has Jesuit in pretty good shape here under the 10 minute mark and another injury for the Tigers. Good grief as Coach De La Torre will make the long walk over and they're looking at his ankle and they're maybe calling for someone. Right side, right there, ouch. That was a blind side block and that's, that may be the player that's injured. Well, DJ was decleated. I mean, that's a, uh, that's a punishing tackle and we saw Jordan Benson, the senior quarterback, warming up to start the second half on the sidelines, and I think you got to make a change for the rest of the night here, Rob. This may uh, end all doubt with uh, DJ a little woozy and Vincent ready to go in at any time. That's a nice interception. Just reach over the top of the right shoulder of Nick Howard and able to secure it. Well, they'll be set up at the 10 yard line, right right in the red zone from the get go. And you're right, I, I'm thinking that Stevenson may be a little woozy and it wouldn't surprise me to see Jordan come out there and quarterback the next time they get the ball. Still have the same starters in there. Holtz left side, Holtz across the end line. Are they gonna give it to him or not? They think he's got yep, it. He does, touchdown, one play. 24, Adam Holtz, a senior, goes wide left. A nice Adam escort Holtz by the offensive Gary line, and they score on one play after the interception to make it 35 nothing. Well, he got the scoring underway with 413 to go in the first on a four-yard run. This one down the far side for 10, and about to be 36 to nothing. Extra point by John Wingerski and Wingerski makes it count and we'll watch it again. Nothing fancy, just a sweep left. Follows the tight end, nice cut down block by one of the wide receivers and able to just get it inside the pylon. And they give it to him. And for Holtz on the ground this year. Let's see, that's his uh, eighth. Now gone over 400 yards of rushing for the year. And again, one of 27 seniors. The Rangers have more juniors than seniors this year. They've got 30 and just two sophomores. And their biggest game this year, rushing wise, was uh, a game against Plano East. They had 290 yards of rushing, and that came in a 57 42 loss. Most yards on the ground they've had this year. Coach Brickman said that was more of a wake-up call than anything for the squad. Mm. He said, look, we turned the ball over four times. We dropped five passes. 
for the next couple of weeks, we did nothing but work on drills on not dropping the football. He says, we may not be the biggest team out there, but we're going to have the strongest hands because we did nothing but work on holding on to the pigskin when we caught it or it was heading in our direction. I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe some of the second team guys start playing defensively for Jesuit. And we've got another penalty flag thrown. See, how many do they have out there? Just too much time. Yeah, got 11. Yeah, at first I thought maybe they had one extra. Oh, here's something for you you'll appreciate. <laughs> you know how how we just cannot stand the type of color scheme uniforms teams throw out when they just outline their numbers? Well, I found out in the press box at halftime that Jesuit only wears these jerseys once a year. And it had to be tonight. Aren't we special? <laughs> On homecoming for Irving. Yes, okay. isn't that special? Kick fielded by Irving over at the 18-yard line, taken across by Garcia. Don Garcia. And let's see if Stevenson goes back out there or not. So they put these special commemorative jerseys back in the locker for next year and bring it out one more time, I guess. Stevenson on the bench. I'm looking at the trainer right now. Look at him. He got hit so hard it might be one of those concussion type things. And true enough, Jordan Vinson, the senior, comes out of the huddle to run this offense. There is Stevenson right there. Vinson on the year over two, and uh, that's it. They're making him go through the drills to make sure that he's coherent and He's tilting his head back and everything that the trainers are taught to make sure the kids are okay to still play ball. They almost missed the handoff and Miles is hit right at the line. Somehow gets a yard and Vincent will come over to see what play they're gonna call next. Now the season started out with uh, Ontiveros as the starting quarterback. I don't even see him out there right now. They've lost so many players. They can't even go to him. They're what was their second stringer or their first stringer when the year started. They are so thin. Depth is not something that they have as a luxury at Irving High School. Handoff right. Miles just swarmed up. Starter still out there as Peyton Long, the Navy recruit, comes into make the stop and it'll be third and 13 and they sniffed this one out from the get-go as Miles tried to turn left and there's Long just waiting on it and they have gone to the second team defense. All right let's give you some of these new numbers if we can pick them up. The wholesale exchanges. Mm. Mark Reedy as a DB. Who else? Billy Daly. Billy Day and Tabit Bitterman. Vincent, crossing pattern, caught by Jacoby. I don't think Jacoby might have got maybe a yard or two past the line of scrimmage. And it'll be fourth down. Safe pass over the middle. They need to 13, though, on third down. They'd have to punt. Both turnovers have cost the uh, Tigers points tonight. Mark Reddy, the junior DB, made the tackle there. Punting into the wind here in the third quarter, down 36 nothing. Yeah, it, it's been a tough time to maybe hit a couple of punts. You can't go straight up in the air because the wind will catch it. It's got to be a pretty much a line drive if possible. Not bad. Well, as soon as it went straight up in the air, that's when it just got hung up in the sky. And Luckily, good coverage. Mario Diaz, the big offensive lineman. Look at him going down there to make the play. Covered a lot of ground in a short period of time. Ah, deep snapper. Yep, the deep snapper. Watch him right in the center of your screen go straight for the kicker. Now he's moving to the left, and not only does he get down there first, but he makes the tackle. He hangs on. And we've got this second team out there offensively. Or Jesuit. Their depth chart a little off a little bit here. And as they hand off Rusty Landon running the offense on their depth chart, 
They had Matt Smith as their second teamer. I think that has gone by the wayside. Landon this year, two of two, 100 yards, oh, it's 50 yards, one touchdown. So getting some action tonight on top by a bunch. And I suspect that they will use up every bit of that play clock that they can. Also a new running back as well. Here goes the snap. Just a quarterback keeper. Boy, he has got a lot of room. He's got some blocking, and he's going to go the distance. 41 yards and the touchdown, but got a penalty. Is that a flag I see at the 24? Hold everything. There is right on the near side. Now Rusty Landon thinks he has a touchdown, but it's coming back. And that's going to be a hold right about the 25. Nothing fancy about it, just the quarterback keeper. There's a call. During the play, holding number 82 on the offense. It'll be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. The yardage after the penalty enforcement is a first down. They give him the first down since it was past the chains. Then they'll have to re reset at the 35. Look at the bottom of the screen, John. See if we can pick it up. Right, yeah, didn't even have to pull him down. It appeared that Connor Jackson, the wide receiver, was pulling the back of Daniel Allen. Yeah, he was away from the action and really influenced nothing, but the referee caught it. It's when, you're in open, when you're in open space. That ball, Evan, uh, Jackson on the yep. run. Evan Jackson, number 36. Has 65 yards this year. Rusty Landon now the quarterback. Rusty one of the ride, wide receivers. They had Clements down as their backup running back, but like I said, I think that depth chart is just throw that thing out the window. Landon right up the gut, nothing fancy. And you can pretty much tell with the second team in now for Jesuit that they're just gonna play basic offense as we wind down the third quarter in a 36 to nothing Ranger lead. New center, Jake Pagel, number 59. You know, when they come back in about three weeks to take on MacArthur, they'll probably have jerseys that you can read very easily, John. I wanna see the white road jerseys with uh, mm -hmm. gold numbers. No, maybe darker. How about black? <laughs> <laughs> maybe are, darker. Are they're, they're purple. Something that's easy for these old eyes to read. Jackson near side as a first down and more. Knocked out at the 16. That'll give the Rangers another first down. Renee Zamora back in at defensive end. Just a sweep to the near side. And he gets the first down before he's even touched. Kevin Kirkland. His 21st carry of the year. Finally drags him out of bounds, but not until they get a first down. Jesuit has, after tonight's game, they've got uh, still the meat of the order left to go. As we take a look in another flag and helmets go running and. I think this one belongs to you. Here's your hat. Yeah. Back Is that your area? head in that hat? Jesuit has Nimitz, White, MacArthur, Carrollton. They've During the got play, a couple of toughies foul left. Face mask, number nine on the defense. Got a that face will be mask. Half the distance from the end of the run, automatic first down. That'll put it half the distance. He said, "Here, take that." <laughs> that's not right, right in front of the umpire. That's not a tug. That's just a full-out takedown. Yeah, right in front of Clifford Peacock, the umpire is looking right at him. He's just like, who are you trying to fool? Just undressed him. <laughs> <laughs> Jesuit 11th in the Metroplex. Jackson, eh, maybe a couple. On the carry. Cooks is there for the tackle. The no some of the these other districts, some of these races tightening up as uh, everybody thought they would in 5-6-A and especially District 7-6-A, that's the uh, Trinity 
South Lake and Coppell district. One of the toughest in the state. Uh, overtime win by South Lake over Coppell a couple of weeks ago. Well, the early showdowns and the Dragons prevailed. Five and one on the year. They always seem to win when they need to, don't they? Second five, Landon keeps. He's got some running room at the one touchdown. Landon. Trusty Landon. On the ground. This only second rushing touchdown of the year. You know, nothing really fancy. You know, they didn't try to run, uh, pass the ball a lot. A little different from last year. You know, Kevon Thomas was a quarterback last year for for Irving, it was 56 to 30 in that game. Extra point is true. And it's now 43 nothing. Just a quarterback point keeper left. They faked to Jackson. Good. Able to get around uh, Sanders, number 41 Sanders, and split the defenders at the goal line. And it was just that one missed tackle is all he needed. And just used his speed to get into the end zone. Well, didn't want any part of him at about the one yard line. 40, 3 0. And again, Judge with they uh, matched their offensive total. They uh, came in averaging 38 points. A little shakedown on the track on the west side. The Tigers not been let out of the cage tonight, still looking for points. And they're battling the wind on the east side. Just trying to buffet anything that is coming out of the north. Temperatures in the low 70s. You stepped outside at halftime and what were you think about 50 degrees or something? Came back in 78. <laughs> I'm like, what? Marco Navarro. I just thought, you know, this it looks like it's you know a lot cooler outside. Well, looks can be deceiving. Jesuit Mac. Three weeks. How many touchdown rushes is that tonight for Jesuit? See, Holtz has two, Landon has one. They got four. That ties a season high against Arlington Bowie. To start the season, they had four touchdowns on the ground. Lathered them up pretty good, 35 nothing. 52 points is their high against Sunset. Fielded right about the goal line, and there's some running room. Kirkland goes over the 30, the 35, and pretty good field position. Back the other way around. Will it be Stevenson? Oh boy, a flag. Oh no. At about the 20. I think. I'm trying to see if Stevenson has his shoulder pads off, if he's done for the night. That'll wipe out this nice uh, kick return by Kirkland. Got a block at the 20. Found a crevice right there. And all for naught as uh, they're going to line back, up at the 23. Number 15 on the receiving team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. It's against uh, Rangel, the third, junior. Third penalty here in the half. Stevenson on the sideline and the shoulder pads are the still on, but he's just first got the helmet first off. First and you know what second. happens when they take the helmet. That usually means you can't go back in. So Vincent will stay in at quarterback. With three minutes to go here in the third quarter of play. And they give it to the big guy, Tinglin. Tinglin number seven. And his brother on the team, sophomores. Jordan Finklin on Maybe the third. Maybe about a yard. Stay of one, second down, nine. Yeah, that's South Lake Carroll district with Trinity in it, Coppell in it, Colleyville in it. And the Rebels of Richland. Now, Richland out to a 2 0 start in that district. Heritage. Uh, Tingling all wrapped up there. There's two or three Rangers all over him. First man off the stack was number 45, Matt Eubanks. Also number 94, Andrew, Andrew Miskell. 
Well, it's just, it's just men at the line. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of running room for those running backs. Got a nice battle over in District 8, 6A, the Warriors of South and Mansfield unbeaten in District 4. Warriors were up on the Gophers, crosstown rivalry. I always hated that, you know, mid-season. It should be the end of the game. You're going to be in the same district. Make it the end of the year. Last game. Yeah. Vincent going deep, overthrows his receiver. Jesuit wanting an offensive pass interference call because Johnson did a little push on the DB, but the official said, no, that was uncatchable. Don't worry about it. The back judge. District 4-6A, you have the Arlington Colts and the Martin Warriors tied for the lead at 2-0. and Lamar, Weatherford, and Bowie in second place. Third place, respectively. Yeah, still a lot of... Well, we got a few more weeks left before that all seems to shake out. You have to beat the teams you're supposed to beat and maybe grab one that's unexpected, you're in. There's one of those straight up punts. And it goes out of bounds at the 16 yard line. And we've got some fisticuffs on the field. Well, this is an all, hey, there are a couple of punches thrown. Yep. And here comes the, the other players from Jesuit, now players from Duncanville, not uh, Duncanville, from Irving. Oh, they may be fighting too tonight. <laughs> yeah, that, somebody got under the skin of Salinas, I think. Well, Coach Delatore is uh, reading the riot act to you know, Salinas. Salinas. Yeah. Something happened toward the end of that play when it went out of bounds. It was away from the play and that's you know that's when things usually happen yeah it happened at about the seven or eight yard line you had three or four guys and then they separated then a one-on-one -on -one, couple of quick jabs thrown yeah. may have some ejections upcoming here yeah i think noah's going to head to the locker room after that he's already headed that way so he's done for the night having been thrown out now aaron's going to have to talk to his kids and calm them down and tell them What's going on? Let's hear the official the play, call. Personal foul number three on the kicking team. The end of the kick was the 18-yard line, half the distance to goal line, first down. Number three has been ejected. Yeah. Salinas ejected from the game, half the distance to the goal from where the, the play ended. And De La Torre regaining control of his kids. A lot of that is frustration, you know. Oh, yeah, you may have been called something, and, uh, you know, you're down 43 nothing, and just can't hold it in forever. It's just, you know, not trying, to, not trying to say what he did was right or cover for him at all, but that's just uh, an O for season coming in and your frustration's taking over. And, and across the other way, Brandon Hickman now, well, you have it first and goal at the nine. This is the third consecutive series that Judge would have started in Irving territory. They started from the 10, the 47, and now they uh, will probably score from the nine. Skyline leading Nimitz 37-13. It's not surprising there. Is football the only sport that you can fight for 48 minutes and not get thrown in jail? <laughs> it is, pretty much. Delay of game called against Jesuit. I mean, they literally just stayed on the sideline until that play was over. And they go back five and we start over. Got a new fullback or a Got a new quarterback, Preston Sledge. How many times have you seen number 81 play quarterback? Well, we uh, we have tonight. We have indeed. He, uh, hasn't appeared in a game at all this year, according to stats. That only took you five minutes to dig through all the stats <laughs> to find those. Yeah, Smith, Landon, Palish, and now Sledge. Jackson stays as a running back to his left. Sledge hangs, hands off to Jackson, and Jackson 
Barrels his way into the end zone and a touchdown. 13 yards out. And for Mr. Jackson, that is his uh, third rushing touchdown of the year. So Jackson will get his name in the paper, as Mr. Lance Brown would always say. Looking for their 50th point of the night. Punched it a little to the right, but still through the uprights. No judge with a second highest offensive points. Uh, Jackson kind of went sideways. Nice uh, tackle anyway by Austin Sanders. Right here, but was right above the goal line when it happened. They scored 52 on Sunset, 50 and counting here tonight. Three different uh, players scoring touchdowns in the second half. Holtz, Landon, and now Jackson as Brandon Hickman gathers uh, the squad together. And uh, I don't know what you can tell the team. I mean, you can't tell them not to play hard. I mean, you got to play all out. That's why you practice. But uh, maybe a different scenario here on top 50 zip. Reminder, you can watch all the games on YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash the city of Irving. Coach Delatoria was telling me before the game he's enjoyed the new classics channel, watching some of the older games. I asked him if he caught himself on any of them yet. No, not yet. He'll find them. Oh, yeah, they'll come around. And the kick fielded at the six yard line. And across the 25, I believe, is that Austin Sanders, number 41. Check that, number 21, Kendrick Kirkland. Kirkland doing most of the duty returning the kicks. They've been kicking away for miles. About 40 seconds left here in the third quarter. Making sure we don't have any penalties. They're going to line everybody up. And Jordan Vinson back out there, number 11. Tigers have been flagged uh, three times for 25 here in the second half. Tingling one of the tight ends. They also have Cruz, who is one of the backup running backs in there. So they go to the full house backfield. Miles pushes right and is... Tackled after about a yard of one. Vincent gain of one. Running over the sidelines and getting the plays and the signals. And they're going to bring in number 61 now, uh, Solis. Well, if they get this one off, this will be the last play. If they can get it off in time. Wesley Taylor Vincent, number 23 in there. So. Coaches have decided to go full house backfield and just run it straight up the middle, and there's some running room between the tackle and the guard, and that'll set up third down and a manageable. But we have finished three, headed for four. Our score, Jesuit 50, Irving nothing. Back with the final quarter in a moment. And back to the fourth quarter of play, third down, a little mix-up behind the line of scrimmage. It's handed off to Jonathan Tinglin, and Tinglin will drop a couple. Dropped by number 45, Matt Eubanks. Couldn't tell if uh, Vincent, excuse me, lined up pretty close with uh, Tinglin. Couldn't tell at first if that was going to be a pass. And a little, little mess up there, it'll be fourth down. Second most points that uh, the Tigers have given up this year. Lost 49 to seven in week four to Skyline. Still, Nobody back deep. No, they're just gonna let that ball roll. And now a timeout by Irving. Had one second, play clock down to one. 
I was checking to see if they had 11 guys on the field. It appears they do. Maybe it was nine here, or 10. Here comes the 11th coming off the bench, Markel Cooks. We talked about the Classics Network, uh, games from the past 33 years. We kicked that off at the beginning of this month. And for all of you old timers that played in ball and said you ran for 100 yards and four touchdowns, well, now we got to prove it. Time Warner, Channel 96, Verizon 32, a at and t u verse Channel 99. If the shutout holds, it will be Jesuit's third shutout this year. Sunset buoy. Yeah, the buoy one, considering what happened the year before. Pretty impressive. Yeah, buoy, a team picked to finish third this year over in District 46A. Another line drive kick, and like you said, with nobody back, this bad boy is just going to roll, roll, and roll some more, and Sanders will down it at the 15-yard line. So I can see the mindset, I think, of Jesuit right there, and that's just let it roll and not get uh, anybody hurt or get the tempers going up just under 11 minutes to go. 54 yards on the punt. Jesuit already out and, and ready to play, and we stick with Preston Sledge, their third team quarterback, Evan Jackson to his left, our right looking at the screen, the backup running back. Did you see a reunion tower lit up? Looked pretty tonight. Yeah. Had uh, OU in red, then it went burnt orange. Boy, I'll be glad when those games really mean something again. <laughs> Texas. How long of a week you'll have? Well, yeah, Longhorns are going to have to do their part. Maybe if Charlie gets all of the guys in he Jackson wants. On the carry. Gain of five on the Give him at least four years. Five. Got to hire a new AD. That'll probably be in, a, I don't know, four or five months. Brandon Robinson, one of the starters that plays defensive end. He's off, taking a breather. Jesuit will just let the play clock wind down a little bit. I can imagine they're going to do nothing but just hand off or a quarterback keep. Quarterback breaks one tackle at the line. Behind the line and Sledge gets back to pretty much the line of scrimmage from that second down play. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, they got they show three receivers at times, but they're just window decoration. I mean, you know, he's going to keep it on the ground, milk the clock, and come out with a win. They, uh, We'll go to 3 0 in district. MacArthur already with the win. We'll stay in first place, tied with Jesuit. Those two teams again will play right here on ICTN in about three weeks. Cannot wait. False start, number 80 on the offense. That's a five yard penalty. Still third down. A penalty assessed to the uh, Rangers, their second of the half. Yeah, big improvement down. from the first half, and all it does is eat up a little more of the clock. The quarterback goes right up the gut sledge. Preston Sledge on the keeper. Some of the fans, a lot of Got a prize tag? Uh, it might be. <laughs> a lot of long faces there in the stands if you're an Irving fan. Coming back for homecoming. A little disappointed. Kirkland, who does some of the kickoff returns, he will stand back at his own 45. <laughs> what do you know of Rangers punt? <laughs> Bounces at their own 46. Kirkland will just back off and down the ball at the 36. Only their second punt of the night, but the circumstances are uh, a little different here in the second half. Yeah, it's you know it's pretty much just go through the motion, don't get anyone hurt. They want to they want to go out themselves, being in physically good shape. Take your steak finger basket on the road back home to campus. <laughs> Box lunch is Box for lunch everybody. for everybody, yeah. 
We used to go, when I was doing UTA basketball, we would get, uh, each of us would get a Domino's pizza, one road trip, a KFC to go meal on another trip. Quick pitch, near side, tingling. Positive yards, about five. One of the players, the Jesuit, getting up slowly, but he's okay. Tinklin's a big load himself. He gets running downhill. I wouldn't want to stop him either. In relief of the sophomore, DJ Stevenson. Both Tinklin's are in there, the twins. Jordan is the deep back. His, his brother, Jonathan, is blocking for him. And he just <laughs> runs over people. It's like, ah. Oh, and stop him. He pretty much run, ran right over John Guzman, the second team defensive back. Ooh, that's our first first down of the second half. Got a full got a line up in the backfield, two uh, running backs in front of Tingland. So we had blocking a little bit, but that kind of collapsed. Yep. If you're a defensive back, just wrap up, hold on, wait for reinforcements. Irving, two tight ends, two in the backfield. And spins again, keeps the legs churning, and almost gets the first down, stays in bounds. You know, with the Texas OU game being tomorrow, they'll see a flag down. Be great if they would just go into the wishbone for old time's sake. <laughs> it's kind of a power eye, kind of a broken yeah. wishbone. 21 points in the third quarter put on the board by Jesuit. They led it the break 29-0. Referee and the back judge at the 45 on the near side. Nat Maxson, the referee, here to your left. Back judge Jeff Brixey. Coach Hickman's like, let's get the game going. And they're going to mark, what, 10 off maybe a holding call. Oh, 15 yards. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 44 on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, second down. Nick Howard, number 44. Watch the right there, coming in late. Hey, I just fell over the pile. I was pushed into the pile. <laughs> Clock starts back up. Full house right. This time wrapped up right from the get-go. Coming across the line of scrimmage is number 96, which is Cunningham. Another one of those juniors we talked about that this team is loaded with. Jesuit and now have an all-time record of 4-0 against Irving and another win here on 6th Street against the uh, Irving schools. Sweep right, Miles back in there. All stacked up over the 41, 42 yard line. Coach Brickman told me defensively his starters coming in, he felt really good about the his down linemen and the four he had in the secondary. Three of those coming back from last year's team. And then with Pretty joining the group, probably one of the more athletic ones that he had in the secondary. Felt really good about the front line and the secondary and then was just waiting for those linebackers to develop. Playing the 3-4, you know, you've got two on the inside and two on the outside. Felt like he had the speed on the corners offensively in a quarterback that has really developed as a threat both on the ground and the air. And Jesuit, as soon as that ball is kicked, the entire team just headed to the sideline. It looked like a fire scene. I yeah. mean, everybody just headed toward the far side. Said, look, we're not going to we're not gonna have any of this extracurricular after the play because it's always, if you, if you think about it, John, it's always the special teams, the guys gunning down the gunners mm -hmm. and the blockers. It's always that extracurricular there that always creates some sort of animosity and the tempers get up. 
Only thing we're doing right now, what, uh, 25 seconds between plays, we're checking off how many plays per minute. So what do we got, eight plays left in the game? <laughs> I'm trying to see if we, have 11, them off. if we have 11 players. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I only see ten out there. Miss exchange. Count the helmets and see if I'm counting ten or not. Okay. Not those eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that eight, nine. Far receiver is about four feet high. No, I'm talking about on the Irving team oh, defensively. Okay. There's only ten guys oh, out there. Nine, ten. There are. Yeah, they're one short. First down by the third team running back, Max Wageman, who's also a wide receiver. I don't know if Tinglin was hurt, but now he comes into the secondary. Well, he's a linebacker, but he was never out there. Yeah, okay. We've got 11 now. Under five to go. Five first downs here in the second half for Jesuit. Sledge, who's been the quarterback now for about the last three or four series, running the offense for the Rangers. Hands off Jackson. Jackson cuts across. First down, 20 plus yards right at the midfield stripe. And 87 yards rushing. In the first half total. Not that many here in the second half. I can't recall after the first offensive series in the second half if the Rangers have thrown the ball at all. They are zero for zero. Yeah. You're correct. Everything on the ground. Right side, a lot of room again for Wageman. And Wageman is knocked out of bounds into the red zone at the 19. Tiptoes for 31. Little speed from Wageman, and we got a penalty flag though. It's gonna bring it back. That'll take away his stats, his bragging rights. Probably a holding call. During the play, Jesuit. holding number 39 on the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. Now, in basketball, they usually swallow the whistles when there's a blowout. Can you just kind of maybe sew that flag into the back pocket? <laughs> maybe Velcro it? <laughs> well, it, it gives the Rangers still a first down. 48 and handoff again to Wageman and Wageman with about the same results both times he's so fast and you, you got to believe that the Irving players are are pretty winded by now defensively and he just you know he's got fresh legs yeah he does too look at him he's got his dance moves down <laughs> Delatore told me, he said, you know, our kids, you know, despite the fact we've taken our lumps, I haven't had any trouble motivating these guys during the course of the season during practice. He says it's, it's enjoyable and heartwarming at the same time that these guys just have not given up hope and keep showing up every day to play. The game. While we got a break, let's thank our longtime sponsor, Gerald Stavely Dry Cleaning, charter sponsor of the Irving Cable Game of the Week. Second down at about one. They're almost in their victory formation. Close. If out of the out of your screen to the right, way back about another five or six yards. There he is. Kind of playing safety. Schottmer, and they're just going to take a knee and just uh, let the clock run out. They've got two more downs to go. And Irving will get the ball back with about 20 seconds or so left 
if they, I don't know if they got time to get it back or not. Yeah, this is his third down. And Jesuit will move on, and they still have a couple of, statistically speaking, games that they should win very handily. Still in front of them. Before they, they play MacArthur, they've got Nimitz. Nimitz struggling tonight against Skyline. They close out the year with uh, R.L. Turner. Again, a team that went eight and four last year, won nine games two years ago, went to the regional semis. You know, White may not beat them, but if the Longhorns keep putting points on the board, it might be, you know, might be one of those 50 to 30 games. Yep, could be. Probably would. White has been holding their own offensively, just can't play defense. Fourth down. Again, Irving will probably get the ball back with about 40 seconds to go as Preston Sledge, the third-team quarterback, getting some time. And that'll stop the clock with 40 seconds to go. And Irving will get the football back to wrap things up in homecoming 2015. Tigers fall to 0-6, started last year at 0-6. Their district mark will now be at 0-3, and they will go to 0-3 at home. You know, last year, Jesuit never trailed at the half. They were 8-0. Going to win a Are lot they, of games at that. Well, they were leading at that half eight, eight times. Hmm. They were trailing four, so they're eight and four, kind of a little misleading here, but they were eight and four with the half. Those are good odds. Miles tumbles and stumbles across the 45, and he's going to be tired tomorrow. First down, they'll wait to move the chains and start the clock one final time. Here's balance tonight, Rob. Jesuit 198 yards rushing, 182 passing. And that's been pretty much their team this year. I mean, that is, that's what they've done from the get-go. It's been pretty balanced as far as rushing and, and passing is concerned. All right, well, that's going to do it. The final play of the ball game as Jesuit Rangers remain undefeated. In district play, winning 50 to nothing over Irving. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll wrap things up. Stay with us. So the Tigers drop one 50 to nothing tonight to the hands of the Jesuit Rangers. Statistically, as one might expect, it was uh, pretty one-sided as Ellen Aaron Delatore talks to his kids after the ball game. And not a lot of, of first downs you see for the Tigers. It's just, you know, the offense struggles, the defense gets worn out, they give up a lot of points. Rangers with 380 total yards. Irving also turned it over two times. Irving with only four first downs and three out of six passing. And again, the totals, they don't lie and they, they're pretty much reflective of what happened tonight in this ball game. Coming up next week, MacArthur, it will be their homecoming. It will be the last of the Irving School District programs that will celebrate their homecoming and they will take on the Bison of Sunset, who have had their troubles of their own mindset. And so this will probably be a good tune-up for MacArthur and the Cardinals as they get to the meat of the batting order, if you will, in district play. Final thoughts, John, before we send this one out. Well, the damage done in the first half as the Rangers jumped out to a 29-0 lead. Hey, hey the game-winning touchdown. The only score they would need was a uh, Adam Holtz four-yard run. That came early 
in the first quarter. They went for two and failed. That made it six nothing. Uh, Jacob polished them through for two more and ran for one as they put out a reach uh, in the first 24 minutes. The Tigers, they still have some winnable games in front of them. They'll go to Carrollton next week, and then two weeks after that, they go to Dallas Sunset. And hopefully, the Tigers can get a couple of wins for this program for this season. That'll do it again, our final. Jesuit 50, Irving nothing. For John Nelson, I'm Rob Willman, and the entire ICTN crew bidding you a pleasant good evening. Irving Game of the Week has been brought to you in part by Gerald Stavely Dry Cleaning.